Hello, Farlanders. My name is Kurt, and welcome back to Farlands or Busts. This is episode 785 of Farlands or Busts, being recorded. Ooh, being recorded live on Twitch here. This episode is going to publish on Sunday, May 31st, 2020. All right. Ooh. Who's gonna get whacked? <laughs> if I hear all these footsteps and I'm like creepers. Being recorded the day before that, obviously. Um Indeed. Episode 785, Sunday, May 31st. And two thousand two hundred and fifty-four dollars raised for pause at farlandsorbus.com. That way is east, this way is west, so let's keep going. Farlandsorbus.com, like I said, is where you can donate and ask a question with your donation. Ooh, let's actually utilize these sheep for their wool. Because we need a little bit. Yoink! Yoink! And... Yoink! There we go! There we go! Continuing on. Continuing on indeed. So yeah, farlandsabus.com. You can learn more about the series. We have in between episodes, if you're just joining us, we have in between episodes been live streaming the journey in a non-episodic manner. Those episodes or those live stream archives are still going up on YouTube as like Farlands or Bust stream, and then the date and the episode number they follow. Um, but the episodes remain, the episodes, the podcast editions remain. And uh, you know what else now remains? Crude space flight from NASA. Just today, as I mentioned in the previous episode, SpaceX Falcon 9 Crew Falcon Crew Dragon, excuse me, Dragon, uh, successfully launched two NASA astronauts, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley, into orbit. I just got home in time. <laughs> I was out walking Juno in between rainstorms here. And uh, I was out a little bit later with her than I thought I was going to be, and I was I, I put it on my phone, uh, the, the the NASA stream on my phone, and had it over my Bluetooth as I was driving home. And I pulled into the garage like with T minus five minutes, and I was like scrambling to get Juno out of the car, and then getting into the basement, and then turning on my TV and, and Twitch on my TV, and I like think I picked it up with like T minus two minutes. Uh, and was able to watch it on the TV with Juno. Uh, and uh, it happened. It happened after uh, the weather delay on the initial launch window on Wednesday. Uh, it happened, and uh, it was all nominal. They even landed the first stage back on the drone ship. Uh, we just got done on stream watching the little uh, media tour of the capsule from the astronauts with a little handheld camera that they did. Um, it's hard to get a sense of scale on the inside there. It certainly seems like there's a lot more room than, say, the Apollo capsules had, obviously. Um, but still not as much room as, say, the space shuttle or, you know, seeing people on the space station as we see. Um, well, that was fun. That was interesting. And now... It's a it's a 19 hour trip from launch to the space station. They're going to sleep for eight hours, and then um, tomorrow is when they will do the actual approach. And I'm sure there's going to be many tests uh, for the approach and eventual docking to the space station, and uh, that'll be something else. Although I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch that. That's a, I, I, I might be out and about. Might try to get on a hike if the weather turns for the better. Look at this. 
Look at this kind of gateway. Gateway to the far lands. Careful of those cactus will fade. Ooh, this seems like it might be a dangerous gateway. <laughs> it's very very dark. Very dark and spooky. These no spawns. No bad spawns? Okay. Ooh, ooh. We did it. Oh a pig! Oh it's fine. <laughs> we don't need pig. He's the gateway keeper. The gatekeeper. Zool. I am Zool. Um Oh yeah, that's very we did go to space today. That, that's a very cool thing that happened. Uh, I I was hosting it on my Twitch page, but like I said, I was frantically driving home at the time, so I really didn't get to hang out and chat as much. Um, but yeah, that happened and continues to happen. And uh, unfortunately, obviously couldn't see it live, but it seemed like any other Elkin 9 launch, fairly undramatic. Uh, in that regard, which is a good thing in spaceflight, uh, which is a good thing indeed. I do like I don't know I, I there probably is going to eventually be like video from within the capsule. They didn't have really many in capsule cameras like with the Soyuz launch. There's since there really are no external cameras on the Soyuz boosters. Um, the internal camera of the Soyuz, you normally, you know, you watch the three astronauts and cosmonauts bouncing around and, and you know, seeing the shaking and the G-forces and things like that. They didn't really have that on the SpaceX one, but I assume, or hopefully, uh, eventually, they'll have, you know, some raw footage of that that they might be able to release. Um, it seemed, like I said, fairly undramatic. Uh, particularly, I would like to see, you know, the, the Miko. Uh, and Seiko to see their their zero G indicator maybe fly about or bounce around or whatever, because uh, that's always a very obvious thing with the Soyuz uh, kicks you kicks you in the pants. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if it's as dramatic or if it's more of a slow throttle down. It's it's hard to tell. We've only ever seen uncrewed satellites uh, and 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 uh, cargo ships being launched with Falcon. We we don't know what it feels like on the inside. Or, I mean, I'm sure they do, but I, I don't know. I want to see! <laughs> I want to know what the experience is. Um, oh yeah, that happened. That happened indeed. Um, what else has happened? What else has happened? Let's talk about questions we got from donations to pause through farlanserbus.com. This one from Cassinia Casca Cassinia Cas Cassinia. Um, have you ever participated in yard sales, or even been to flea markets? If so, what are some of the strangest or interesting things you've found or bought? Um, I never participated. Like, I've never, like, if you're asking if I've ever sold things. We had the odd garage sale as I was a kid growing up at home, but uh, never, like, participated. And honestly, that was me and the girlfriends. Uh, one of the things we do was go to, like, antique stores or uh, consignment stores or, you know, um, Junk stores. <laughs> um, to look at all the weird old stuff people think is valuable and trying to sell off. Um, that was a fun thing we did that obviously doesn't happen right now and stuff. Um, I did go to a swap meet. Remember the swap meet video? That was more of a car thing. Uh, swap meets are things. Um, I guess flea market, yeah, I guess a, a, a flea market would be a better way to describe some of the old junk stores we've been to. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, we never buy anything. There's rarely, I don't know that we've ever bought anything. We were searching for, uh, at one point, I guess the girlfriend saw a bunch of corn themed, not corn the band, but corn the vegetable. Uh, corn themed 
dinnerware, dinnerware, was it dinnerware? Tea set, I think it was a tea set or something like that with, with cups and things um, that she'd seen before, but we couldn't track it down. Uh, but no, I don't know that I've ever bought anything from a flea market. You just go and laugh at all the stuff. <laughs> it's really what you do, or be like, oh, I have that. <laughs> um, that's really the main reason you go, in my opinion. Um, no, I take that back. I think the girlfriend bought a few things. Uh, she was going to a rodeo, so she needed some boots. <laughs> Some some boot and and rodeo related accoutrement, um, but no, I mean oftentimes that stuff really isn't cheap, because like I said, it's um, usually like I, is this a thing everywhere or is this like a United States thing? Let's go to sleep. Oop, that's not how you go to sleep. That's how. <laughs> and awakeness. And continuing on this. Is this just a United States thing? I, I suppose people might not know antique stores. Or maybe they're called something else. Um, but essentially, it's like a big building. Like a normal store, except each section is like rented out by somebody who has a bunch of stuff. Usually to a theme uh, that they then set up in their little rental area booth, table, whatever it be, to sell there. And then obviously the owner of the place gets a cut of whatever they sell there. So they set their own prices and whatever, and then you just bring the stuff up and they know which booth it came from and uh, do the associated things there. And some of these are like, you know, hundreds of booths. Uh, one of them we went to took place in an old uh, storage building, like a like 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 you know a storage building where like each of the storage uh, garages or whatever uh, were their own booth or whatever. Uh, that was a weird one. Um, a lot of times they're just in buildings taking up multiple floors. Um, a reuse store is a different but similar type of thing. Uh, maybe a little bit more useful because they have a lot of like construction like here's here's a whole stack of old doors um, uh, And things like that a reuse store is similar I suppose um, So yeah, that that's what I'm describing in case anybody is unaware <laughs> uh, but uh, No, yeah, we used to do that a lot, but no, I don't uh, it, it the, the thing is is if you start to buy stuff then you become one of those people who eventually has to rent out one of those booths to try to sell all this random stuff that you've collected over the years. Uh, so it's best to avoid that. Uh, there is one we wanted to go to that the girlfriend said had a lot of car emblems and badges because uh, I was looking for a particular Corolla badge that doesn't exist ever anywhere. Um, I was looking for one at the swap meet but it was all like American cars and badges and things. Um, it's a vicious cycle, that's very true. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, interesting stuff. I mean, I'm, I suppose we've taken pictures of like strange, like Jesus artwork <laughs> that's kind of weird and off-putting. Um, weird albums and things, or ooh, here's a crazy hat, put on the hat. Uh, and, and take a picture, but I, I can't, I can't think of like anything specific that ever made me go like, "Ooh, look at that!" or "Ah, that's different." But uh... yeah, that's all. That's 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 what I can figure out. I guess I, I do have a collection of those diecast cars. That like that would be like a theme it would be somebody who has a booth and it's just all those diecast one eighteenth scale model cars or whatever. Um, putting on strange hats seems like a good way to get head lice. These hats are decades old. The lice has long been dead. Um, it's not a worry. 
That's why they're called flea markets. Ba -da 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 -da. Um, so yeah, I have done that sort of thing and it, it just has like a, a thing to do. As we don't like shopping, we're not going to go to like new stores or go to like a mall. What's a mall? And like shop for new clothes or like stuff like that. So I think that the flea market, the the antique store row of various old downtown cities is is the way that we kind of scratch that itch. Itch that scratch? You know what I mean. Uh, but thank you very much for the donation and question. Capybara Kazmanot asks, Do you prefer listening to music on headphones or through speakers? Does it depend on the music? It depends on the situation. Um, like speakers, obviously, if I'm in a car. And I don't listen to music that often anymore. Um, speakers, if I'm in my house. Um, but like headphones, if I'm on a plane or a train or like some other sort of scenario where I need to occupy my my brain whilst sitting idly idolons idolons um so it's not it's not really a preference thing auditorily although depending on the situation headphones can be a little bit more close and dynamic of a listening experience i think um I've never had, I, it's always something I'm like, I should, you know, every time I take a flight, I just have the little earbud headphones. Uh, I'm like, it would be nice to just not have to like crank my music to 100% uh, to be able to hear it over the plane engines and the drone of the airplane. I should get some noise canceling headphones. And then I look them up and I see their prices and I'm like, I don't need those. <laughs> I don't fly enough to require those. Uh, headphones and they're also very the good ones anyway are pretty large and bulky and uh yeah no I, so I never got any noise canceling headphones um but but yeah no I don't uh I don't listen to much music anymore I mean if I do like I said it's in my car we were riding we took a ride a couple days ago in the Corolla um, which doesn't have a working radio or speakers anymore. I took them out. Um, but, like, the girlfriend was like, we need to listen to some, like, period-correct 70s music. And, like, she tried to put it on her phone to, like, play over her phone speakers. And that's one way you should not listen to music. That is one way you should not listen to music. Um, and I'm like, nope, stop. <laughs> I'd rather just not <laughs> listen to that. I do, what I don't understand is people hiking. I mean, I understand, because people are annoying. Um, but people hiking or walking on trails who have, like, their phone in their pockets and music blaring. It's like, why? 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 It's like the equivalent of people who listen to music way too loud in their cars with their windows open. They feel like everybody else should have, a, have to listen to their poor choice in music tastes as well. And specifically on, like, nature and hiking trails, that is particularly annoying. Don't be that person. Never be that person. Headphones exist for a reason, or, oh, I don't know, enjoy nature. Dang it, boat! Get back here! Hey! Let's go. People are mentioning the Seinheiser. Noise canceling headphones. $150 is a lot for a pair of headphones that are eventually going to get crushed in my luggage. <laughs> um, that's a lot of monies. The little earbud thingies, $12 <laughs> or whatever. Um, that's that's the problem. Like I also have a dedicated pair of cheap imitation sunglasses to take while I'm traveling because I know those I'm gonna forget or get broken or whatever. I'm not going to bring my nice sunglasses. So, yeah. That's where I stand. <laughs> um, for someone who 
doesn't hasn't flown in well over a year um that's that's difficult that's that's a difficult uh that's a, a difficult spend to justify Ooh, it's almost like the uh, the F three monument of that one season, season four, season five, season four. It was the season that we lost Wolfie. A mysterious scenario. Ooh, and then this is also like the pit of the other F three monument of season six. Sure, let's call it season six. Season three? I don't know anymore. They all. This is like a, a, a dang straight up copy. It's a rocket. It's the SpaceX rocket, and this is the plume, and it's taking off. And Wolfie is going to the International Space Station. Go get it, Wolfie. Go get him. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> How appropriate. How appropriate. I should make the elevated hidey hole up there. I'm not going to because I would most definitely fall off and die. Thumbnail! Video thumbnail! Is it me or these days going by fast? <laughs> Minecraft days, that is. And real life days. It's the end of May already! April feels like it took forever to get through, but now May is like... Bloop, bloop, and... we're done. And a weakness. Ooh, look at that image. Sun rising over the rocket. Try another. For good measure. Nuttless Cage. Thank you for the donation. Asks, aside from tattoos... <laughs> that's just a funny way to say it that I'm going to continue saying for the rest of my life. Have you considered getting any other body modifications? Please feel free to skip if you've already talked about it or don't feel comfortable sharing. Did I not just answer this? Like, not saying anything against the question asker here, but I, I, I looked through all the questions from the pause donations and couldn't find it, but I swear it's been like less than five episodes since I answered a similar question. Referencing, we know you have a tattoo, would you ever consider body modifications? I swear, but I couldn't find it. And then I'm like, was it you even, Nautilus Cage? Like, I distinctly remember putting it in my notepads. Was it from chat? It might have been from chat. It feels like it was in an episode, though. It feels like even it was before I started streaming. Are you not gonna kill this pig? You're gonna make me do it? Oh, and he was dry all along. It might not have been in FLOB. But where else do I answer questions? In a predetermined method. Like I said, I distinctly remember... Too many sticks. I distinctly remember putting it in the Farlands or Bust notepad outline that I have open for recording Farlands or Bust. But regardless, yeah, I think I started talking about, like, piercings and ear floppy bits and like whatever else uh the girlfriend made me aware of eye tattoos like tattooing the actual ball of your eye which is less of a tattoo and more they just inject the ink um that's an interesting look but no thanks um so yeah, so instead of the, the whites of your eyes being white, obviously, they become black. Uh, a, a, a milky gray. Um, anybody's free to do whatever they want, as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else. I mean, you, I mean, well, hmm. Um, and it's not hurting yourself, like your own chance. You know what I mean. Um, mirror Wolfie. <laughs> um,
So yeah, I don't. Uh, I I I just am, I I would like like tattoos. See, even tattoos, I don't. Even though it clearly is, quote unquote, body modification, it doesn't feel like it. It's like more of a body adornment. This is a 303 area. Um, yeah, it, it feels more like art than modification, I suppose. Um, I, I'm not a fan of the ear lobe stretching hoops. Those squick me out a bit. Mostly when they are they they don't have their hoops in them. <laughs> it was just a dangly piece of skin. Um, and there's all other there's all other sorts piercings. I've never been a fan of. Like I don't even like I said I lose my glasses and my headphones. Um, I don't wear watches anymore. I don't I don't even like wearing rings. Are uncomfortable. Um, so having any sort of metallic anything dangling about wherever it may be um, is not something I'm interested in. Um, but like I said, yeah, you're it, it, just because I don't find it aesthetically pleasing to my own eye doesn't mean others can't and others shouldn't do that to themselves. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess that answers that, right? Yeah, no, I... Like I said, I, I'm kind of... Coming up with tattoo ideas and money by tattoos is enough of an overwhelming prospect. I can't think of... I can't think of, like, additional stuff. And yeah, like I said, it, it doesn't strike me as body modification. It's, yeah, it's more like I just want, like, a cool piece of art on me. Maybe it means something to me, maybe it doesn't, maybe it's just a cool piece of art. But, um, yeah, that's kind of my view on it. And I suppose, in general, I've gotten started very late in my life compared to many others, as far as getting tattoos and getting into that sort of thing. Uh, but again, that was more of a money, time idea sort of <laughs> a, a, a situation instead of like I'm going to wait or, or any change of heart of myself um, yeah it, it is almost like makeup I mean people get makeup tattooed permanently on their faces but I mean it does feel more like a permanent sort of makeup versus body modification uh, that's how you gotta say it ooh that's tempting that's very tempting, but I don't know that Wolfie would like that very much, so let's not jump off that cliff. Indeed. What time is it? Midday. Thank you, everybody, for those donations and the questions. Uh, I do appreciate the continued support. I do understand that there is a lot, a lot going on in the world right now, and... I'll be the first to say there might be more pressing or appropriate things to donate to. Um, unfortunately, flob. I, 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 it's not as... I, I can't make it... I wish I could, and maybe in the future I can't. I can't make it as flexible as... You know, it would be interesting and perhaps good if I could just be like, this is going on right now. Let's support this cause. This is, you know... Uh, this might be something that needs our help right now. Let's support this cause. Uh, but just as like the, the platform itself with Farlands, it's it's difficult uh, to jump around like that right now. Like I said, in the future maybe. Um, and even though I know people watch Farlands or Bust to get away from things, uh, there are certain things that you should not get away from. And one of those things, as I'm sure you've heard, oh look at this is uh, what's going on in Minneapolis and now across the country, the United States, um, and has been going on for decades, uh, just perhaps without the spotlight on it. And um, I don't have my voice. <laughs> I don't have any voice uh, in this. this. Mine is not the voice you should be listening to regarding racism, police brutality, 
uh, and just the ongoing experience of black Americans. Um, but it just is very frustrating. And um, I can only kind of, I, it only makes me think of, it only makes me think of how as an American, I'm taught about the history even growing up in Illinois, a, a quote-unquote union, a north state, um, and how whitewashed it is, and how I think it's thanks to the internet, as many bad things come up from it, um, we're able to educate ourselves well beyond what we were taught in school. And um, I don't know how much even other people from other countries and other cultures kind of understand how glossed over it is in our history books, uh, like slavery and racism and the civil rights and the civil war. Um, it was all, to me, it felt presented as some sort of nebulous monster or idea, um, racism, you know, as if like slavery and the boats coming over were some sort of natural disaster and not fueled by men and the men who founded the country even uh, and the society that this country was built on and then furthermore policing and the civil rights movement and racism um it, w it was never applied to people and i think there's a very specific reason for that and it shows in a lot of people who might not, who might have just taken that at face value. Um, you know, like it's never said when we're talking about, say, you know, civil rights, uh, Selma, Martin Luther King, you know, that happened. <laughs> and that could be, you know, oh, racism and all these people, uh, you know, not giving up their seat or, or doing this or whatever. That was your parents to my generation, or your grandparents, who were on the bad side, on the racist side of that, and uh, there was a big disconnect there, even in, in and I'm, I don't know, has it changed? <laughs> uh, in the American education system, from my perspective, I can't imagine what the perspective of uh, a, a, a black uh, person in, in school listening to this, um, uh, so, this is, uh, this is not going to go away easily, um, it's not going to be solved easily, but it shouldn't be, because it hasn't been easy for an entire population of people for the last multiple centuries, uh, so, that's what I have to say about it, so, educate yourself. There are many more resources, like I said, much better voices, more appropriate voices to listen to than my own out there about what's going on in Minneapolis, what happened to George Floyd, say his name, and I can't not say something about it because it's such a huge problem and the biggest problem, not the biggest problem, but a big problem is being able to ignore it and the privilege people have whether or not they acknowledge it to be able to ignore it when it's not just this one one incident and it is unignorable for those communities affected indeed that's what i have to say about that um i hope you're all doing well and I hope uh, you, uh, yeah, <laughs> you uh, take care of each other and everything like that. With everything going on, that would be much appreciated. And uh, I appreciate you watching this episode. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time. <laughs>